by the gravity. Uh, based on uh, these uh, uh, collaborations with these people. Uh, by the way, can you see the, the, the pointer? Okay, good. thank you. Okay, so let me begin with the introduction. Uh, why modify the gravity? So there are at least, I think, uh, three motivations, maybe maybe more, <laughs> but uh, at least three. Okay, first, uh, modified gravity may address mysteries in the universe, such as dark energy, dark matter, inflation, big bang singularity, and so on. And second, uh, it may help uh, constructing a theory of quantum gravity. So the, for example, super strength theory or Hoyerlis gravity may help us understanding uh, and constructing quantum gravity. And also the, uh, there are some motivation. Okay, so it may help understand the GR itself. So the, after all, one of the best ways to understand something may be just to break it and then reconstruct it. Okay, after reconstructing, we, maybe we, we understand GR better. Okay. And uh, from, from the point of view of the third motivation, I think we need to understand GR before modifying uh, GR. Okay. So the, let me remind you how to uh, count number of degree freedom in, in, in general relativity. Okay, so probably everyone knows, but just in case, and also uh, just as a warm up. Okay. So the, we start with the 10 metric components because we are in four dimensions. And uh, so this means that uh, at each point we have a 20 dimensional phase space. Okay. And in order to go to the phase space, uh, it's uh, convenient to adopt the so-called ADM decomposition. So that we introduce laps N and shift N I and the 3D metric H I J. So the 4D metric is written in this way. Then the Einstein heavy action that describes the, the, the uh, uh, GR is uh, written in this way, uh, in 4D covariant way. And this is 4D uh, curvature, and this is 3D curvature. Then after plugging this, we have this, okay? So here, uh, Kij is uh, the so-called exchange curvature. So that it includes time derivative of 3D metric, this one but doesn't include time derivative of lux and shift. Okay. So this means that, uh, so uh, uh, moment are conjugate to lux and shift are zero identically. So this, they are kind of algebra, algebraic equation in the, field, uh, in the field space. So they are constraints. And uh, indeed actually the Hamiltonian turned out to be linear in, in, uh, in lux and shift. So as a result, the all constraints are, are commutes with uh, those uh, uh, pi n and uh, pi i. Okay. So the, uh, this means that they, they are so-called first class. Maybe I should, I should remind you what, what, what first class is. And uh, so, the, uh, so basically first class is better than second class as we know. <laughs> and uh, so the second class constraint, uh, one, one, one second class constraint removes one phase space dimension. On the other hand, the first class constraint can remove uh, two, uh, const, uh, two, two phase space dimension by just one constraint. Okay? So in this sense, first class constraint is better. Okay? Also, uh, first class constraint can gener uh, actually generate a symmetry. Okay? So, uh, this means that this uh, one plus three, I mean, four, cons four, four, class, uh, four first class constraints, uh, each of them remove two phase space dimension at each point. And also in GR, we have uh, more uh, first class constraints because uh, theory is invariant under 4D D field. So that we have four generators of 4D D field okay, at each point. So that they are also first class constraints. So, in the end, we have four plus four first class constraints. So we started with a 20 dimensional phase space and eight first class constraints. And each of them removed two, so that we end up with the four phase space, uh, physical phase space dimension. This corresponds to two local physical degree freedom. Okay. And uh, as we know, they, they correspond to gravitational waves, plus mode and uh, plus mode. But this argument is fully nonlinear. Okay, so the uh, so we know that uh, uh, gravitational waves exist in, 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 in our universe in nature. So that uh, when we modify uh, GR, of course the number of degree freedom should be two or larger. We should include gravitational waves. 
Okay. So the minimal number of degree freedom in modified gravity should be two. Okay. We cannot have theory uh, with one or zero degree freedom. And then the, of course, it, they, they, they are uh, inconsistent with other Newton's. Okay. So we should have two or more. Okay. The question here is uh, this. So the can, can this be saturated? So in other words, can we find uh, a non-GR theory with two degree freedom? This is the question that I want to ask in this talk. Okay. And this is a motivation for this uh, minimally modified gravity, MMG. Okay. So the question is this, so the, uh, is GR, GR unique? And uh, uh, the famous Lovelock theorem tend to say yes. I mean, we, we tend to say yes based on Lovelock theorem. If we assume this uh, assumption, OD and the diffusion invariance and the metric only, and up to uh, second order equation motion of this form. And also EFT uh, uh, tend to say yes, at least at low energy, if we assume these three. However, cosmological backgrounds break uh, 4D diffusion uh, while uh, keeping uh, 3D diffusion. So the, maybe we can break uh, this uh, assumption, four dimensional, I mean, no, sorry. Uh, this uh, 4D diffusion. Okay. Of course, we are living in four dimension, but uh, maybe we don't need to uh, respect all 4D diffusion. But if we break 4D diffusion and keep, uh, keep uh, 3D diffusion only, then the, uh, we uh, tend to end up with the uh, uh, theory with three local physical degree freedom. For example, scalar tensor theory, EFT with inflation, and dark energy, uh, EFT with dark energy, and the with gravity. So this is uh, one example, okay? A simple example, a scalar tensor theory. And this is a covariant action. So the 4D uh, curvature is multiplied by some uh, function of scalar phi, phi. And uh, uh, this uh, P of X and phi, so X is a usual kinetic term. And they, they are kinetic, including, uh, this term includes the kinetic term and also potential term, okay? And, uh, so, but this term, this part is a bit different from GR, okay? And then uh, let's try to uh, uh, consider again the ADM decomposition, laps and shift and the 3D metric, then plugging this to here. And also let's uh, take the so-called uh, the unitary gauge where phi is taken as time, okay? This gauge is uh, good as far as a derivative of phi is time-like. Then plugging this and this to here, then we get the action of this form, okay? So that in a sense, scalar field disappear, okay? Because we take this, uh, this gauge. And the uh, action is written in terms of metric only and time. Time dependence appears explicitly. And, uh, but uh, we know that uh, we number of degree freedom three because this is equivalent to this theory where we have a scalar field, okay? So the, if we break 4D uh, diffusion, and as you see, uh, this breaks 4D uh, uh, diffusion because uh, this, this is written in terms of uh, ADM decomposition. Okay. And so the, if we break 4D diffusion, but the break, uh, keeps uh, uh, only 3D diffusion, then we tend, uh, we, uh, it, we tend, uh, tend to end up with uh, three local degree freedom. Okay. So real question is here. So that is GR unique when we assume four dimensions and 3D diffusion and metric only and uh, two local physical degree freedom, which corresponds to two polarization of uh, uh, transverse stress stress gravitational waves. Okay. So answer turned out to be no, as I will show in this talk. And uh, uh, theory, non-GR theory, uh, which satisfies these conditions uh, called minimally modified gravity, MMG. Okay, so this is the subject of this talk. Okay. And uh, so let me uh, explain some examples of uh, type one and type two MMG theories. Okay. So in order to say that, that this, the answer is no, the, the easiest way is to show some examples. So before that, I think I should explain what type one is and what type two is. So here it is. And uh, as uh, we introduced in this paper. So uh, type one and type two are defined in the, in the following way. So let me start with type one. So the 
Let's consider a simple scalar tensor theory. So the 4D curvature is multiplied by some scalar, fun uh, some, uh, a function of scalar phi phi. And the uh, matter couples to uh, metric are minimally. So this, is, uh, this frame is sometimes called Jordan frame or matter frame because matter action is simple. Okay. But uh, from this frame, we can perform the so-called conformal transformation in this way, uh, in this form. Then the, this part becomes uh, as simple as this. So this is uh, nothing but the Einstein Hilbert action. Okay. So the, this part is exactly the same as uh, Einstein's uh, general relativity. So this is, a, so for this reason, this frame is called Einstein frame. But of course, uh, uh, of course, I mean, uh, by the way, uh, this part includes the kinetic term of scalar field and so on. And so kinetic term of scalar field is included here in a different form. And uh, so you may call this GR, but it's not because matter action is modified in this frame. Okay, matter couples to this combination, okay, which is written in terms of the metric and the scalar field. So the, when matter is excited, the both scalar field and the, and the uh, metric are excited, and then the, they propagate. Then the, this combination, uh, cup, I mean, uh, is uh, probed by matter in a different places. So in this way, gravity is modified. So uh, this is indeed a modified gravity, and it is uh, actually uh, equivalent to this. And this is because of non-trivial matter coupling. Let's call this type of modified gravity type one. Okay. And however, there are more general scalar tensor theories where there are no Einstein frame. Let's call them type two. Okay. Let me repeat. So type one, there exists an Einstein frame. So this kind of modified gravity can be recast as GR plus extra degree freedom plus matter, uh, which uh, couples non-trivially by change of variable. Type two doesn't have Einstein frame. So by any change of variables, we cannot recast this type of modified gravity as GR plus extra degree freedom plus matter. Okay. So this classification is very, very simple, easy. So let's consider type one minimally modified gravity. So the, uh, by definition, because this is minimally modified gravity, number of degree freedom is two at each point. And uh, uh, there, there exists an Einstein frame because this is type one, okay? So therefore, uh, we can recast this kind of theory into uh, GR plus matter, which mean, uh, which couples uh, non trivial by change of variables. In other words, we can start from GR, then the perform uh, kind of, I mean, some, some transformation, change of variables, to obtain any type one minimally modified gravity. Okay. And as we know, as far as I know, <laughs> okay, the most general change of variables is canonical transformation. So the, we can start from GR and then perform canonical transformation, then couple matter to the, the, the frame after transformation. Then we can, we can obtain any type one minimally modified gravity. But if we do that, uh, naively, namely, if we couple matter just after chemical transformation, then this is inconsistent because uh, uh, matter decoupled, I mean, a combination of matter after chemical uh, transformation breaks the field. Okay? So if we, I mean, so if we just the perform chemical transformation, of course we have the field, but if the field is kind, kind of killing, killing. and uh, so the uh, DFO is written in, a, in an unusual way. And, uh, but the matter, if we consider DFO, usual DFO invariant matter, say standard model particle physics, then the, uh, so the matter, matter action is invariant under uh, this uh, simple DFO. Okay, they, 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 they do not match. So if we combine them, then the part of DFO is broken. So the first class constraint is downgraded to second class. And as I said, uh, first class constraint removes two phase space degree, but uh, second class only one degree. Therefore, we end up with uh, extra degree freedom in phase space. And actually, 
the uh, uh, number of uh, phase space dimension would, may become odd at each point. And then the, the theory would be inconsistent. So uh, it's not, uh, this, uh, this doesn't work. However, there's the way out. We can just get fix after canonical transformation, but before adding matter, okay? In this case, the first class constraint splits into a pair of second class constraints. Then uh, we can safely add matter, okay? In other words, we break part of the field by, by ourselves. Then the, we, we still have a, a enough number of constraints so that the number of degree freedom is two still. So the general prescription, prescription is like this. So we can uh, perform a chemical transformation from GR, then the uh, gauge fix. After that, we can add matter. Then the, uh, we have a pair of second class constraints and this is consistent, okay? And uh, so there are many ways to, to, to construct the first class, uh, sorry, type one minimally modified gravity. And uh, this is one, one example. Okay, one example type on uh, minimally modified gravity. And uh, this includes uh, one free function of H. H is a uh, uh, GR part of the Hamilton constraint of GR. And we consider a uh, free function of, uh, of uh, this uh, constraint. Then the new constraint is uh, F of H plus matter contribution. Okay. And if we choose this kind of uh, uh, free function F, then the, actually we can improve the, the, uh, 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 the fit between uh, theory and data, and in particular uh, Planck data. And uh, uh, fit is better than lambda CDM by, by, by uh, this amount. So uh, chi square improves uh, this amount. Okay, so this is not too bad. Okay, probably I don't have time to explain this in detail, but uh, at least uh, this kind of modification may be useful. To understand the, the, the some some uh, uh, cosmological data, okay. and now let me talk about the type two minimally modified gravity. Okay. So by definition, type two minimally modified gravity has two local physical degree of freedom, and there are no Einstein frame. So we cannot recast this kind of theory as a GR plus matter by change of variables by any, any uh, change of variables. But uh, so is there such a theory? And actually, yes. And one example is a minimal theory of mass of gravity that I, I developed some, some years ago with uh, Antonio Di Fritsche. And so in my, uh, in my institute. And uh, so another example uh, is, is, uh, was recently found in this paper. So let me uh, briefly explain this. So uh, we so this uh, this uh, type two MMG includes one free function v of phi, and uh, so we start with the uh, Hamiltonian of GR with three plus uh, one decomposition again, and then perform chemical transformation to a new frame, and this chemical transformation includes the two free functions, and then the after that we can add a cosmological constant in the new frame. Then gauge fix. After that, we go back to the original frame. Then we have uh, uh, some Hamiltonian of this theory, and then we can uh, we can perform horizontal transformation to, to get the Lagrangian, which is of this form. After that, we can add uh, matter to this uh, uh, gravity action. Okay, and this action includes one free function v of uh, auxiliary field phi, and, uh, but uh, still this has uh, just a two degree freedom. We don't have extra degree freedom. And uh, so somehow, as I said, the, the, uh, in this step two, we have two free functions, but uh, in the end, we end up with the theory with one free function. I mean, some combination of these uh, two free functions appears in the action. And uh, this free function, uh, can be used to reconstruct any Friedman background. Okay. So the uh, so 
indeed, we can fit the data uh, by using this uh, freedom. And indeed, uh, this reconstruction works as far as the uh, background is expanding. And the matter, I mean, matter and the radi I mean, so ordinary matter, including matter and radi uh, dust and the radiation and, uh, and so on, and also neutrinos and so on, uh, satisfies null energy condition. Then we can reconstruct the, back I mean, the, the, the action. And for any uh, background and any function V, we can compute the speed of gravitational waves, and it is one, as suggested by recent observation. And there is no extra degree freedom. We can check this uh, at the free nonlinear level. And we can use this uh, to, to reduce uh, H not tension from uh, and for sigma to, to 1.3 sigma, as we have shown in this paper, actually in, in uh, version two. In version one, we have, we have some, there are some, some errors, but uh, we corrected them. And uh, recently we also extended this, uh, uh, this uh, theory to, in, to, uh, to take advantage of two free functions. And so the, not only background, but also uh, the, 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 uh, some, the behavior perturbation can be reconstructed. So uh, this, uh, this extension may be useful to address uh, SA tension as well as uh, H not tension. So if you are interested in, please have a look at this paper. Okay. So uh, this is the second example type two MMG, but uh, from now on, I'd like to uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, yet another example of type two MMG, which is uh, D24 einstein gauss bonnet gravity with two degree freedom. And this was uh, developed in this paper with uh, uh, Katsuki and uh, Iman and uh, Shuntaro. So as we know, einstein gauss bonnet theory makes sense usually only in five dimension or higher dimensions, five or higher dimensions. And indeed uh, in four dimensions, gauss bonnet term is total derivative and uh, therefore does not contribute to the equation motion usually. But uh, uh, so these people uh, ask the interesting question, what happens if we keep this combination kept finite and send D to four. In this limit, alpha diverges, where alpha is coefficient in front of the Einstein gauss, I mean, gauss bond term. Okay. So the, in a sense, we have uh, zero divided by zero. Okay. So the question is, uh, can this be finite and interesting? This is the question. Maybe yes, but uh, uh, as we know from uh, Lavrock theorem, in, so, uh, actually, this requires uh, extra, either extra degree of freedom or a uh, Lorentz violation. As we know, I mean, the Lovelock theorem is a statement uh, about the equation motion, not the action. So at the level of, level of the equation motion, in order to break, uh, in order to uh, change the, the, the GR, we need to either break uh, symmetry, symmetry or, or need to introduce uh, extra degree of freedom. So the best we can do without extra degree of freedom is to keep 3D field, but break 4D field. So this is uh, exactly the, the MMG framework. So indeed, we can, we can construct uh, the consistent uh, D to four einstein gauss bonnet theory in the framework of uh, MMG. So this is what I exactly talk about from now. Okay, so the, uh, Hamiltonian of 4D theory with two degree freedom is given by this. Uh, uh, indeed, I don't have time to explain the, the construction, but uh, and given the Hamiltonian, it's easy to perform the Hamiltonian analysis to count the number of degree freedom. Okay. So the a number of degree freedom is two at the fully nonlinear level. Okay. And the important point is that this Hamiltonian is unique. Uh, up to a choice of uh, this function, G3. G3 is uh, uh, here, and uh, uh, so this is Lagrange multiplier. So the G3 is extra constraint to remove extra degree freedom. So the, the five conditions uh, are, are, are like this. So if we import these five conditions, 
then the, this theory is unique up to choice of this function G3. Okay, so first uh, 3D special diffeo is uh, respected and the number of degree freedom two. And uh, the theory reduced to GR when the coefficient uh, of uh, this uh, extra term, uh, sorry, I'm here and here is there. Of course, uh, in, order to call, uh, in, order, in order to be able to call this theory einstein gauss bonnet uh, we need to have a GR limit, okay? And also the uh, correction terms are fourth order in derivatives as in einstein gauss bonnet And also the under certain conditions, the solutions in higher dimensions, higher dimensional einstein gauss bonnet theory uh, reduced to uh, some solution of this theory in the uh, D to four limit. Okay. So the, uh, so the, by, because of these uh, five conditions, uh, I think it's proper to call this theory uh, for the uh, for D to four einstein gauss model theory. And uh, this is a consistent theory D to four einstein gauss model graph. And uh, so then we have uh, a Hamiltonian, then we can easily go to the uh, Lagrangian by, by, by uh, performing Lusiana transformation. And this is valid for a specific choice, but uh, compatible with the cosmology and static, uh, static solution. And uh, as, as, uh, as I uh, mentioned here, under certain conditions, uh, this uh, uh, solution in, in, in higher dimensional einstein gauss monet theory is related to solutions in, in, in this field. Okay. And uh, this theory breaks uh, uh, 4D diffio. And, uh, but we assume that uh, uh, matter action respects the local Lorentz invariance at the classical level. And uh, then the quantum level, at the quantum level, uh, Lorentz violation percolates from gravity sector to matter sector by graviton roots. But of course, uh, so the uh, Lorentz violation in matter sector is suppressed not only by alpha tilde, but also by negative power of uh, M Planck square, and therefore is under control. I mean, the uh, Lorentz violation is, is induced by graviton groups, so suppressed by M Planck square. And uh, when alpha tilde uh, is, is zero, then we when we end up with uh, just uh, we go back to GR in a uh, gauge fixed form. So the, when alpha tilde is zero, there is no Lorentz violation in matter sector. So I think uh, Lorentz violation is under control. Okay. We can get some constraints on this theory, especially the, 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 the coefficient alpha tilde. And the strong, strongest constraint comes from the propagation of gravity waves and alpha tilde should be smaller than uh, this value. By the way, alpha tilde, alpha tilde is dimension free as you see from here. Okay. And uh, let me summarize. So the uh, uh, minimal number of degree freedom in modified gravity is two. And uh, this number can be saturated. And those series that saturates uh, this number is called minimally modified gravity. And the type one MMG has Einstein frame and uh, uh, type two doesn't. And the type one, uh, all type one MMG can be uh, constructed in a systematic way from GR by canonical transformation and gauge fixing. And we have this phenomenology even uh, with uh, one, one, one uh, particular example. And this can fit Planck data better than lambda CDM, for example. And uh, uh, so we have uh, several example of type two MMG and uh, one example is minimal theory of massive gravity. And another example is uh, this uh, theory that uh, replaces lambda by a function V of phi. And the background can be constructed from, uh, I mean, potential can be reconstructed from any Friedman background. And this can reduce H not tension from four sigma to 1.3 sigma. And uh, then we, I, I, I discussed about the D to four einstein gauss bonnet uh, gravity. And uh, we proposed the, the consistent theory of, of uh, D to four einstein gauss bonnet gravity with two degree freedom in the framework type, framework type two MMG. 
And uh, we argue that this is unique up to a choice of uh, gauge fix uh, uh, additional constraint, which stems from a uh, temporal gauge condition. And then the, this theory is naturally related to higher dimensional einstein gauss monet gravity. And uh, we, we found some constraints. And the strongest co uh, constraint comes from uh, propagation gravitation waves. So thank you very much. Uh, do, do, uh, do I have more time? Maybe I have a- Yeah, you uh, still have uh, <clears throat> five minutes if you want to say something. Yeah. No, we already have some questions. So yes. it's kind yeah. of- Actually, I, yeah, if you have time, I'd like to talk about this by in, in five minutes. Okay, that sounds yeah. good. Okay, great. Yes. So I'd like to talk about this uh, maybe partially, uh, partially UV completion of P of X from curved field space based on my recent work with the uh, real number. And this is actually the, the uh, uh, kind of uh, updates on my old work with the uh, real and the Yota. So the naturally, uh, 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 some slides uh, 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 overlap with the, my old slides <laughs> on my, my previous work. And uh, so the uh, as we know, uh, in, in fluid, fluid dynamics, uh, there are many uh, techniques developed for nonlinear dynamics. And uh, as you can see, uh, see uh, from this textbook. <laughs> okay. And uh, so one of, the, one of the such techniques is uh, uh, called simple waves. And uh, so simple waves is basically the analog of uh, right, right moving mode and left moving mode. If you consider linear, linear uh, uh, wave, then we have a, a left moving mode and the right, right, right moving modes. And for example, if we consider the chemical scale up, we have right, left moving mode and right, right moving mode. On the other hand, if we consider P of X, uh, this is no longer the case. I mean, uh, we, we cannot superimpose left moving mode and right moving mode, but still we have analog of a left moving mode and right moving mode. Okay? They are called simple waves. And uh, so simple wave propagate along the so-called characteristics. And the characteristics is uh, a kind of analog of a uh, lighter cone, okay? And uh, along each uh, characteristic, the, 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 the uh, simple wave uh, kind of carries the uh, constant value of first derivative of scalar field in the case of P of X, okay? And, uh, we have different the characteristics and each characteristic on each characteristics, we have a fixed value of a, a fast derivative of a scalar field. I mean, by the way, I, I'm considering a one plus one dimension. And uh, however, if we consider generic P of X, then the uh, characteristics are not parallel with each other. So they intersect and when they intersect, as I said, this uh, characteristic carries uh, uh, some particular value of fast derivative. This characteristic also carries particular value of uh, fast derivative, but they are different. And they, they collide, they, they intersect, meaning that uh, the fast derivative is no longer a uh, uh, single value. In other words, at this point, second derivative and higher derivative uh, diverges. Okay, so this is a caustic formation. And this is very, very generic in, in, uh, in P of X type theory. So it's really difficult to avoid this. And in, in 2016, we tried to find a condition, necessary and sufficient condition under which uh, this kind of caustics does not happen. Okay. In other words, we found a, a condition under which all characteristics are parallel with each other. Okay. This sets a condition on the, on the theory and we found that only DBI scalar and, uh, and uh, uh, canonical scalar are okay. All other theories uh, 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 cost, I mean, form caustics. I mean, of course we can take some limit to get the uh, uh, kind of, uh, is, uh, uh, to, to, to take an another form of action, but uh, still there, there are limit of DBI or canonical scalar. Okay. And uh, uh, then the, yes, so, we argue that uh, the theory must be replaced by some UV completion. But still, k sense fields are still useful at the low energy A50 away from caustics. That was our argument. Now, uh, recently, uh, actually last year, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we tried to find uh, uh, kind, of, kind of partial UV completion. Okay, this one, some UV completion. 
by two field model with curved field space. So we consider uh, a, a kind of a negatively curved field space where with a, a modular, modular metric of this form. And we introduce a parameter beta. Okay. Beta is uh, 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 controls the, the coverage of field space and also the mass of the extra field, okay, second field. When beta is large, the second field uh, becomes heavy and heavy, and we can integrate out. Then we go back to the, the single field. If we do that, then the potential in the second, I mean, to, to the two field model is related to P of X by Legendre transformation. They, uh, they are one to one correspondence. Okay. And then we, we analyze the caustics, the, uh, the, the would be caustics <laughs> by two field model, okay, uh, numerically. Okay. So in, in the case of single field EFT, we form a caustics where this is the first derivative, this is second derivative, second derivative diverging. But uh, in the two field model, we can go through, okay. So this is uh, caustic free. So the uh, conclusion now is that uh, we can, we can uh, kind of uh, partially UV complete the, the P of X by, by, by uh, two, two field model. And the P of X and the potential of the, 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 the two field model are related to each other by the gender transformation. And the near would be caustics, uh, single field EFT is replaced by two field completion and would be caustics result. But uh, a P of X model is still, k sense model is still useful as a low energy FT away from caustics. And also we have uh, also studied uh, the cosmology based on the two field model and uh, uh, also analyze the relation between P of X. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Shinji, for uh, discussing this. Um, this other set of results. So I thought, yeah, maybe it's a good time to go for questions. I'm not sure I got the order right, but let me start with Maria Milova, who raised her hand, if you want to ask your question. Uh, hello. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. So towards yes. the end of the first talk, you mentioned that a Lorentz violation percolates to the matter sector via graviton loops. Now, the way I understood that uh, is that quantum corrections somehow break Lorentz uh, uh, Lorentz invariance, and that is some kind of quantum anomaly. Or can you explain? Or have I understood completely wrong? No, it's not an anomaly. It, I mean, so yes. So the uh, Lorentz, Lorentz symmetry is broken by by by, by Gramton loops, and uh, it doesn't introduce. I mean, it, yeah, it, it doesn't introduce any, any any anything. But I mean, of course, I mean, it, it's too big, and <laughs> yeah. It, so it so Lorentz violation would, would contradict with observation. But as far as uh, I mean, the, the uh, Lorentz violation is suppressed by Planck square and the alpha tilde. It's okay. Of, I mean, uh, by the way, if, if we, we don't want to break parity, <laughs> if we break parity, then the then the even Planck suppressed uh, violation is bad, already excluded by 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 uh, say say gamma uh, reverse right curve. I'm not not right curve. I think uh, polarization. But it is a quantum effect. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, yeah. But okay, that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. It's not, Thank uh, you. Gauge, gauge, gauge symmetry is not broken. But at the quantum level? No, we, I mean, we don't break gauge symmetry. I mean, DFO is already broken. I mean, we break, uh, we break uh, DFO by, by, by gauge fixing already. And uh, oh. by combining the, the matter and the gravity sector, we don't break uh, uh, gauge symmetry. So even, even, I mean, even classical level or uh, quantum level. Yes. Great, so the next question that I had was from uh, Tony who raised his hand. Tony, you can come and ask your question. Thanks, um, Enrico. Hi, Shinji. Um, so hi. My, question, my question was about your type two family of theories. Uh, so. Obviously, I can um, see so you have um, don't have 4D diffs here, but obviously, I can always restore 4D diffs by means of a, a Stuckelberg sure, trick. Sure. And I guess I was yes. curious to know what becomes of the Stuckelberg field when you when you do that. Um, ah, yeah, that's a good question. We we didn't try, but uh, it, it should be straightforward. Yes, yeah. 
but, but I mean, my concern, of course, would be that it that it that it becomes strongly coupled. Um, you know, because we no, no. I mean, uh, yeah, the other day we did something similar, right? Yeah, there is no no extra degree freedom at the fully nonlinear level. Mm. Yeah. Just so it's not strongly coupled. There. Yeah, and if we if we I mean if we take into account kind of corrections, then the then the, this uh, so there is a small deviation. So the then the the extra degree freedom would, would appear apparently, but they, they are very heavy. So they, we, we don't have a strong coupling. Either so here, really then, okay, but then you're saying you so if I do that Stuckelberg trick, you're saying I now have a theory which is different from GR. Yeah. Which which, which is different variants. So that seems to go against all the the, the original sort of rules, right? Ah, okay, yeah. I mean, you'll you'll get around just to say I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break, uh, I'm gonna break 4D diffs, but but now I'm not breaking them because I've done the Stuckelberg trick. So, so right, so. right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So either is fine, but uh, I, I started the game in this way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but we can we can restate uh, restate the game uh, in a, in a different way, as we as you say. Right. Okay. Okay, then <clears throat> the next one was actually myself raising the hand. Um, I thought this was very interesting. We actually tried to approach this problem from a different angle, but you know we should land on the same spot. And we were thinking of not using Lagrangians to avoid the confusions of gauge invariance and only think about amplitudes. Of course, that restricted our analysis to Minkowski. And what we proved with uh, David and Jakob earlier this year was uh, that you cannot write down amplitudes for uh, massless particles um, with, with standard um, dispersion relation mm -hmm. uh, that have the, the, the correct factorizing property as dictated by unitarity and locality. So to, to, uh, to, reconcile, to, to reconcile that with your result, it must be that none of these theories has a Minkowski solution. Is that correct? Uh, we have, yeah, we have a uh, Minkowski solution. Yes. Uh, but of course, I mean, it depends. <laughs> so, for example, uh, yeah, even in GR, we inter if we introduce cosmology constant, we don't have a Minkowski solution, <laughs> right? And here, we, if we choose the potential V, uh, in, 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 so if we shift the, 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 the origin of, I mean, so if we add, there is a freedom to add the constant here. Then by adjusting constant, uh, we can find the uh, Minkowski solution in the absence of matter. By adding matter, of course, we have a expanding universe. But, uh, but what we prove is that if you have uh, a massless spin two in Minkowski, then its interaction must be those of GR. So it must be that when you go to yeah, that, if we, if we, uh, yeah, if we yeah. assume, uh, I mean, Lorentz invariance, yes. But uh, here we don't have. No, no, we didn't assume Lorentz invariance. We broke. Ah, okay. Even if you break boost, uh, we, we prove that this must be the case, as long as oh. you don't break rotations. Uh, but I, I don't think you're uh -huh. breaking rotations. So we we yeah. proved it uh, for arbitrarily boost breaking interactions, the GR yeah. is the only one that gives amplitude that correctly factorizes in Minkowski. I see, that's interesting. Yeah, so indeed, uh, but, but uh, here, for example, this one has a two degree freedom and uh, the dispersion relation is massive. It's so, massive. Yeah, in this case. And uh, yeah. in this case, I think massless. And uh, so uh, if we, yeah, so I don't know how, how, how to evade your, 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 your argument. But we assume this massless. Yeah. So, if, so yeah. Yeah, this, this, one, this one is massless. This one is massless. This one is massive. This one is massless. And also the, the third one, this one, uh, sorry, this one, is massless, but uh, this massless relation includes higher, I mean, nonlinear uh, term. So the k to four, and yeah, so the not only k square, but also k to four. So omega square includes k to four. That's very interesting. I, I'd like to yeah. discuss more with you to see how we can find uh, this. This yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah, indeed, oh. this. I mean, I, I don't understand. Uh, I mean, this theory in, in your language. Yeah, indeed. I, actually, we we are also working on on, on this uh, direction so that. In the absence of matter, can we show that this is really type two or not? <laughs> mm -hmm. That is what we are, we are working on, and in a different uh, different way. Yes. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that's very interesting. I can see one last person who raised a hand, Elias. 
Um, yes, thank you. Hi, CG. Um, basically, what I wanted to ask you is uh, to what extent these theories make sense in the quantum theory? Let's say you add uh, weak uh, quantum effects, and to what extent you may have uh, quantum effects that, because of the broken symmetry, would create trouble? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, I don't have an answer, actually. So the, 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 what I can say is that the, from the bottom-up approach, so the, uh, if we include the quantum corrections uh, at low energy, then the, uh, we break the structure of the theory. And then the, we, uh, we end up with the uh, extra degree freedom. But uh, they are very heavy. And uh, so the, at some point, I mean, so we haven't estimated the, the cutoff scale, but the zero cutoff scale the, 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 the extra degree that would appear by, by, by say, graviton loops would be very heavy and heavier than, than cutoff. And, and that, but we have not estimated cutoff. And from top down, yeah, we, maybe if we, if we have something like a, a Jose or some, I mean, some other theories uh, that is UV complete and Lorentz violating, we may end up with uh, EFT of this type or not. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, my hope. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Shinji, for uh, answering uh, the many questions. It's time to